that debate of Easter 2023. Today, you may hear phrases such as laissez-faire, a planned economy, uh, trickle-down economics, bottom-up eco economics, growing the economy, growing the pie, uh, redistribution of wealth. As our paper speakers debate the merits of the free market, you're encouraged to get involved. You can do so during any of the speeches by standing up and saying points of information or on that point. However, you may only go ahead if the speaker accepts. If you want to make a floor speech, you will have the chance to do so in the intervals of our paper speakers. And finally, as always, cries such as hear, hear are permitted. Moving on to the motion tonight. The motion before the house is this house believes the free market is the enemy of freedom and democracy. Opening the debate tonight, we have Femi Olawale. Femi is a political activist and co-founder of the pro-EU advocacy group, Our Group, Our Future, Our Choice. He frequently appears on prominent political talk shows and has written for Independent, The Guardian, and The Metro. Mr. Olawale, you have the ear of the house. This house believes that the free market is the enemy of freedom and democracy. You can either have a free market economy or you can have a free market of ideas. You cannot have both because free markets produce monopolies. You let the market do what it wants. Eventually one company or several will become top dog and they will dominate the field. Like your Apples, your Googles, your Rupert Murdochs, which is why 90% of all newspaper, um, of the market share of the newspapers in the UK are owned by three companies, DG, DMG Media, Reach, and News, News UK. Sure. Um, we're talking as if we have a free market already in the news, but we don't. Do you not think that perhaps these monopolies have arised as a result of government intervention and the media being kind of in bed with the government, getting privileges? I'd say there's an element of the government work, working together with media. That's, defi that's definitely the case. However, I think the free market element is what allows those companies to become do dominant, um, which is why 90, so that means that 70 million people get, the get their ideas, get their thoughts, get their opinions, get their information through, controlled by three entities. That is not freedom of thought by anyone's stretch of the imagination. And that's why people are leaning more towards social media, because they know that the mainstream media is so heavily um, channeled through these small, um, few, in, few individuals, hence the growth of TikTok, hence the growth of Twitter. And the opposition will try to argue that that is not proof that the free market is working, that people have the choice to go towards our other outlets. But we have to be really clear on what we mean by free market. Free market and, and market economy are not the same thing. Free market means that the market is not controlled by the government. Market economy means the system, means the system is, is working based on supply and demand. Those are two different things. And it is because the free market exists, including in social media, that we have entities such as, as, as Elon Musk, who has now bought Twitter and is able to do whatever he wants with that and has, and has channeled it towards his own ends. He has essentially monetized the nature of authenticity. It now costs $8, $8 a month in order to be classified as a legitimate outlet. That sort of thing is not freedom. Um, we've seen what's happened with Facebook. We've seen the, the influence of large corporations to be able to spend whatever they, money they want in order to influence the flow of information, as we saw with, for example, Trump. We saw it with Brexit. We've seen, we've seen the damage that is done by allowing companies to spend their money whatever, in whatever they, way they want. There has to be a degree of regulation. We have to have a degree of media separation at the top to break up these monopolies so that our information belongs to us, the people. And we've seen the consequences of um, aren't those companies successful because they provide the ideas that the, the, population, the population wants? Um, are they, um, aren't they responding to a demand? And, uh, yeah. Well, I'd argue that the way that in which um, Facebook has been providing information, especially given the dominance of uh, channeled and, fund and funded ad adverts, has led to its decline, especially among Gen Zs. Um, as for uh, where I was, um, we've seen the consequences of allowing um, large corporations and the market to have free reign in terms of influencing our political opinions. We've seen what happens in, for example, America, 
We know that the vast majority of Americans are in favor of gun control, and yet because of the extreme power of the gun lobby in America, we've seen that they have no ability to stop that. And we've seen the consequences of that. People in schools understand how damaging that is in America every single day. In the UK, we can see very clearly how much, how much the, the market is influencing politicians. You've seen that with your Owen Pattersons, the lobbying scandals there, the Andrew Bridgens. We've seen, we've seen how much, how much the, the Conservative Party especially was linked to um, uh, corporate entities during the pandemic. We know that the uh, free reign that is allowed to large corporations ends up hurting people. And, it, and if you look at issues that, are, that matter to us, so for example, how much people are taxed, we know that the people want very different things to the, to the politicians. We know that 63% of, um, of the people are in favor of higher taxation, whereas the government isn't. And that's what happens when you allow multi, um, large corporations to essentially influence our, our politicians. Now, it also happened very much with Brexit. As I mentioned, Facebook, we know what happened in terms of the ads that were shown that were targeted to places. If we allow corporations to have free reign, this is what, this is what we end up seeing. And the consequences of that are for people that we end up with more poverty. Because the simple fact is, somebody in poverty is not free. Somebody living with a gun to their head is not free. You may, the opposition will argue that we need to let, people, let companies do whatever they want, amass whatever they want, and, and use people, and exploit people, and whatever they want. They may be free. The person who's struggling to feed their kids, not free. The Bank of England says that Brexit has cost um, each, and each family, each household, £1,000 a year. A recent poll was done that, that said that half of low-income families are skipping meals in order to feed their kids. Those people are not free, and that is the result of free market econ economics. And I think we need to start regulating um, co companies in, in a much better way, because that is the only way we're going to fix this problem. The opposition will argue that we need to allow companies to... Um, uh, In the end, it comes down to this. If we allow companies to do whatever they want, ultimately it ends up being essentially Darwinism on, on steroids. Companies will, companies will the, the, the largest will, will, will rise, the smallest will suffer, and in the end, the people at the bottom will not have the life that they want. In America, we've seen what happens with healthcare. They're not able to um, uh, get healthcare. It's, it's based on the survival of the fittest thing, and that's because of the free market. The only way to get true freedom is to control those at the top. Thank you very much.